Thank you for the introduction. So, as you have already heard, uh, the title of, of our presentation is the three level hierarchical microgrid control uh, model development and uh, laboratory implementation. Uh, so, this is the presentation outline. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce uh, microgrids that I will explain, uh, introduced hier hierarchical control scheme that we developed in this paper and then validated on the experimental microgrid. And at the end of the presentation, I'm going to present some simulation results. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm sure that you all aware of that there is no uh, unique definition of a microgrids, but it is a generally accepted uh, definition that microgrid is an integrated energy system consisting of uh, interconnected loads and different types of DGs and a microgrid as an integrated system uh, connected to the grid through the point of common conflict basically can operate uh, in two modes. So the first one is grid connected mode and the second one is island and boat. Uh, so this figure uh, is, illustrates a typical uh, so-called hybrid microgrid that consists of uh, AC and a DC part. So the DC part is illustrated with the red lines and the AC part is illustrated with the blue one. Uh, so the intention of this paper and our main goal was to develop a hierarchical control scheme for microgrid operation so that that basically can serve as a basis as a foundation for for integration of microgrids uh, in different types of electricity markets. Uh, so this figure shows the hierarchical control scheme. Uh, as you can see, the control schemes consists of uh, three level. So the first level controller uh, called upper optimization level as well is responsible for long term behavior of the microgrid and it's not influenced by the transit behavior of the fast dynamics. So basically the first level is an economic problem that minimizes uh, overall, overall operating cost of a microgrid. Then, uh, then we have a lower optimization level, or we simply call it a frequency controller. Uh, so the second level controller is in charge of uh, frequency primary reserve provision uh, in grid connected mode. So we analyze only grid connected mode in this paper, although that, that, that will be extended, but I'll explain that later. So the second level uh, basically uses more accurate representation of specific devices within the microgrid and then solves real-time control problem on an aggregated level. And then we have a third level. So basically the third level is based on classical controllers and serves only for tracking optimal set points received from the upper two control level. So here's important to emphasize, basically with this approach, it is possible uh, to use existing uh, control and, and communication structure. So uh, mainly all the devices are usually connected to SCADA. So existing SCADA infrastructure is, it, is possible to integrate in this approach. Okay, uh, so upper optimization level is represented in the form of a dynamic economic dispatch problem. As I already mentioned, the main goal of this control level is uh, to minimize the oper total operating costs and to satisfy the demand and other technical constraints over a prediction horizon. So equation number one is a cost function uh, used uh, in the dynamic economic dispatch problem. And basically the first ter term in the cost function represents the costs associated with uh, energy production from DGs. Uh, and the second term represents cost or profit from the interaction uh, with, the with, with the utility grid. So capital T represents the length of uh, prediction horizon. Then we have uh, some operational constraints. So basically constraint number two uh, represents power balance equation. Uh, in this equation, the first ter term on the left-hand side represent uh, production level from the dispatchable DGs. And the second term represents total production level from non-dispatchable uh, renewable energy sources units in the microgrid for the entire prediction horizon. And then uh, uh, on the right, right, right hand side, so the first uh, term uh, on the right hand side uh, represents uh, consumption level of uh, non-critical dispatchable or controllable loads at time instant T. 
And the second term on that side represents also consumption level, but from non-critical non uh, or non-dispatchable loads at time t. So uh, constraints number three to seven are technical constraints for a DG units. So basically uh, constraint number three represents uh, minimum and maximum production level for the DG units and constraints uh, four to seven express uh, ramp up and uh, ramp down constraints for the DG units. And also important to tell here is that, uh, I mean, dispatchable loads have the possibility to provide a demand response. So basically constraint uh, number eight is, is mainly posed to, to make sure that the total energy of the consumer doesn't change uh, over the operating horizon. Uh, next, we have lower optimization level or the frequency controller. So basically this, this uh, controller uh, at this level is in charge of frequency primary reserve provision in grid connected mode. And this controller is developed based on model predictive control approach. So the frequency control problem uh, at the aggregated system level is commonly stated uh, using the swing equation as a means to describe uh, the inertia of the system. So uh, equ in equation number nine, delta F is the frequency deviation from the nominal frequency. H is the, the inertia uh, based supply time and uh, D load is the load damping coefficient. And also we have a delta PM, which is a mechanical power balance within the considered grid. And uh, as, I, as I already mentioned, this, this controller is developed based on model predictive control approach and the optimization problem that is used within the MPC uh, is expressed uh, here uh, with equations uh, 12 to 15. Here is important to, to emphasize that uh, we use, uh, in this controller, we use a quadratic uh, cost function. Uh, Okay, so this is the, the topology of the experimental mi microgrid uh, that is actually available at, at the University of Zagreb. And we use this microgrid uh, to test the functionality uh, of, of this approach. So as you can see, uh, this is a hybrid microgrid that consists of AC and a DC part. So in the AC part, we have a small scale hydropower plant, uh, which represents a DG unit. And also we have a PV power plant uh, that represents a uh, non-dispatchable RES unit uh, within the microgrid. Uh, in, the, in the AC part as well, we have a bank of resistors that represent a uh, non-controllable load. Uh, AC and DC part of the microgrid are, are coupled using bidirectional converter. And then on the DC side, we have two DC electronic loads that are fully controllable. So as you can see, all the components have been integrated into, into a laboratory SCADA system with different uh, communication protocols. And then the main component of our hierarchical control scheme uh, is, a, is a flexible smart grid co-simulation framework uh, called uh, Mosaic. And basically, uh, Mosaic's main goals are to coordinate uh, the execution of all controllers, so all controllers at all levels, and, and, and to, to control data exchange between the controllers as well. So basically, Mosaic used to, is, is used to orchestrate uh, when the controller at each control level will be called and how often the data among them will be exchanged. As you can see in this figure, so the first and the second control level, so upper optimization level, a level, a level and the lower optimization level are being directly connected uh, through co-simulation framework, uh, while the local plant level controllers are integrated into uh, hierarchical control structure through existing SCADA infrastructure. Uh, SCADA is connected uh, to, to Mosaic uh, using a TCP-based uh, gateway. Okay. So here are some figures. Uh, here you can see the PV plant uh, at, at the laboratory microgrid. Uh, this is the cabinet where the bidirectional converter and two DC electronic flows are located. And this is the actually small scale hydropower plant uh, available at the laboratory. So the figure on the left hand side uh, shows the uh, turbine housing and synchronous generator. 
and the figure on the right hand side shows control cabinet and the power supply cabinet for the for the hydropower plant. Uh, so this figure uh, shows the working prin principle of the hierarchical control approach that we used. So as you can see, uh, the entire operating procedure uh, consists of six steps. So step one uh, is conducted every 15 minutes. So in this step, uh, cost simulation framework uh, reads uh, current active uh, power measurements and then initialize the upper optimization uh, control algorithm and then executes that algorithm in a general algebraic modeling system. And then uh, results of that are, I mean, the results are then optimal active set points for each control by unit uh, for the next uh, 15, minute, 15 minutes. So uh, in the next step, so in this step number two, Mosaic sends these optimal active power set points to frequency controller or to lower optimization level. Then in this step, Mosaic uh, once again reads frequency and, and current active power measurements of all microgrids component from SCADA and then forwards those measurements uh, to, to the frequency controller. Uh, then in step four, uh, Mosaic calls the frequency controller to execute. Uh, in the next step, so if frequency measurement doesn't deviate from the nominal frequency, then the frequency controller will send through SCADA optimal active set, uh, power set points received from Mosaic in step two to local plant level controllers that will follow those set points. Uh, in the case of frequency deviations, uh, frequency controller will send reschedule optimal active power set points to the local plant level controllers uh in order to provide primary reserve in in the grid connected mode and then uh i mean steps three to six are cyclically executed every 300 milliseconds so to validate the functionality of this uh control approach we use two de deterministic simulation experiments so here are some ass assumptions for for both experiments so uh, in, uh, during both experiments, the microgrid is, is operated with the same consumption profiles uh, of the dispatchable loads. Uh, in the first experiment, uh, production level from a PV plant was 6.23 kilowatts, and then in the second one is uh, 2.98 kilowatts. And uh, non-controllable loads uh, have uh, has uh, three kilowatts consumption uh, consumption level. So here is also important to tell that uh, in both experiments, uh, the hydropower plant is given uh, higher degrees of freedom uh, in terms of uh, deviations away from the input reference uh, than the two dispatchable uh, loads. Uh, so this, this uh, figure illustrates uh, results of, uh, of experiment one. So the dashed line uh, in the input space represent uh, active power set points or references generated by the frequency controller, uh, while the solid lines represent the ref references received from the upper optimization level uh, controller. So U0 represents the hydropower plant reference, U1 represents reference for the dispatchable load one, and U2 rep represents uh, the reference for the dispatchable load two. So basically in this experiment, uh, the lower uh, reference penalization factor uh, for the hydropower plant uh, is the main reason why you see the, the deviations for, uh, from the frequency controller references for the hydropower plant uh, that are generated from the frequency controller uh, compared to, to the re references uh, generated by the upper optimization level controller. And uh, dispatchable loads in this case more or less strictly follow, follow the references received for the, from the upper uh, control levels because uh, frequency controller, uh, in, in frequency controller, we, we have used uh, higher penalization factors for these, uh, for, for the loads, while we put a uh, lower penalization factor for the hydropower plant. And, um, Similar thing is, is in, uh, in the second experiment, but the, the, the main difference between experiment number one and two is that in experiment number two, we have used the uh, higher penalization factor for the hydropower plant. And in this case, it is visible that 
uh, the references generated from, uh, from the frequency controller doesn't deviate too much uh, from the references generated uh, from the upper control level. While for the loads, uh, the situation is, is more or less the same because we haven't changed the uh, penalization factors for the loads. Uh, so uh, experimental results have shown the potential of, of this uh, control scheme. Uh, so basically our further research will be mainly focused on the evaluation of this uh, approach in the islanded mode. Of course, we, we intend to, to extend the, the existing microgrid with additional components such as uh, different types of battery storage, additional PV capacity, additional DG units, uh, etc. So the main strength of this approach uh, lies in the fact that basically Mosaic uh, has different types of APIs, so different tools could easily be integrated into this control structure. For example, if we want to extend this control structure with uh, voltage, uh, voltage regulation, so some power, power analysis tool could, could also be integrated in Mosaic. And for example, uh, when the upper, upper optimization level is executed, then before those optimal active power points uh, have been sent to the, to the frequency controller, uh, power, power flow simulation tool could be called from Mosaic to execute uh, and to see what will happen uh, with voltages using the, the set points uh, calculated uh, in this level. And then in case if it's going to be some uh, voltage violations, uh, basically uh, uh, set points could be rescheduled before they, they send to, to the frequency controller. So that, that's, that's, that is one possible extension of, of this. Uh, so thank you for your attention and I'm open for questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Matteo, for your very interesting um, presentation.